my roommates, like if I if I go for like a walk with one of them, or like if we're driving somewhere, they're like, oh, you've got keys? I'm leaving mine then. It's like, wh- why? Yeah. Why would you not just take your house keys with you? Take them with you wherever you go always. Yeah. yeah I'm usually like that too. Yeah. We have a, like a front, uh, the front door is a keypad, right? And I still take keys with me just in case I come home and that thing's dead. Or there's power mm-hmm. outage or... Or it's battery it. powered. Yeah. It's battery powered, but just in case we're dead or in case I forget the four <laughs> digit. I'm just so blackout drunk. You I'm like, hey, you make that joke, but I had to help six Dave nine, six the, nine. The police roll up and like, hey, check this out. <laughs> this funky town. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. It's Blood Feud with a she. You know what's a really uh, cool ad? Um, I'm sure everyone here remembers it. Was the um, the robot on Planet Danger? Yeah, yeah, Astar. Yeah, yeah. That ad was fucking rad. Astar. Now that only aired in Canada. You show that to the Americans, and they're like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, because it was a War Amps thing. It was yeah, a Canadian War Amps. I can put my arms back on. You can. You can. Oh, yeah. So they say, yeah. Yeah. It I was, remember those. Little, it was like, so wooden... awesome. It was like all these. Sp- getting saw blades and was like i remember being a kid and be like i want to play like ashtar yeah it made me want to be <laughs> really i want to go did. find a combine it, really it made me want to be so much fire of your dead circular saw <laughs> yeah. oh. no 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 it wasn't a circ saw it was a radial arm saw those things are fucking freaky and just like hanging from the roof <laughs> really has the opposite effect they yeah were going i wanted for. to be so belligerently unsafe after those commercials yeah <laughs> Fuck you, Astar. Should we confuse all of our American listeners? We have universal health care. Yep. <laughs> the, the house hip, yeah, the Canadian house, house hippos. hippos. Yeah, little Canadian house hippos. No American knows what the hell you're talking about if you talk about house hippos. Yeah, they uh, they collect little Sorry, pieces what? of the house hippos. You the know Canadian the house, house hippos. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Canadian yeah, yeah, house hippos. They, yeah. they survive from the crumbs on peanut butter on toast. And they and they collect uh, belly button lint for, for nests. They got the best David Attenborough-esque actor they could. <laughs> but we couldn't afford David Attenborough. You guys ever I'm remember? I'm Richard Palmenter. You guys ever remember the uh, like? I'm sorry. What's your thing? Commercial where like mine sound effects. Here's a T Rex. That one fat like, kid with the tuba, like. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> and there was uh, this one kid who's like, I'm a magician, and there's just like cut to his like little brother in the box. Like, Mom, <laughs> Aiden cut me in half again. <laughs> like I like bugs. His face is just cut. <laughs> Nobody's good at everything. <laughs> Everybody's good at something. And it's like once well, it's like, my dad comes into my room every night and there's kind of away. Hi everyone, I'm Scott. I'm your gamekeeper and I play the Weaver. Who wants to talk to Jeremy? Nobody. Who is Jeremy? We don't know who yeah, Jeremy we is. Yeah, we don't. What are you? Fucking throw us a bone <laughs> here. What are you, cop? We are Jeremy spoken class. Oh no, I already, I already boo, did that joke. Boo, Steven. <laughs> boo, Steven. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello, I am Steven, and I play Shun, a half lane monk. Not there really, yeah. Yeah, really, sure really. I do. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Fuck off, all of you. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Multi class, maybe. Or? <laughs> One day, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> then I can say, I can say rogue, and it won't be wrong, <laughs> unless I multi class into something else. <laughs> oh my god, what if you did monk? ranger and then if you split the difference it's kind of a rogue is it some some rangers are like the mul- the gloomstalker ranger is stepping on the toes of rogues but to a degree mm-hmm. hi everyone my name's clark and i play lotion the half elf cleric hi lotion i'm clark nope damn it <laughs> <laughs> hi folks my name is rod i play alicordia a female rogue uh yeah one fun fact about Alicordia is she listens to the all-female Water Genasi band Slime Garden and their hit Surf and More Surf. She also really likes the other bands Selena Goblin is, oh. Alice the Cooper, Alex is on Fire, Rolling Stone Giants, <laughs> Cone of Coldplay, and the Imagine Dragonborns. Just want to put that out there. I'd like to give you the inspiration for Alex is on fire. I think you already know. <laughs> what was it originally? What's the actual band? Is it Alice Ale- on fire? No, Alex. Alex is on fire. Alex is yeah. on fire. But okay. it really just spells out Alex is on fire. <laughs> oh, I get it now. Okay. I thought yeah. it was, I, what's, isn't there like a, 
Alice in Chains. That's what I'm thinking. That's yeah. Thing. I was okay. also thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also, a really good band too. Anyway, who wants to catch us up? And a single ten foot tall, eight foot wide door that looks like ocean water, somehow standing just in the frame of the door, shimmering with iridescent light. Shun poke his head through. And you're in a barn. You're lying on straw. And there's kind of hustle and bustle, and you can hear the sounds of combat all around. Let me see if I got this this clear. Steven is the paladin woman. Clark is the Lotion-esque character. Rod is the Goliath man. My lord inquisitor, it is done. We carried out your orders. We rooted out the heretics. They are in the square, awaiting your order to be hanged. We must be part of some sort of holy war. It's a group hallucination. That's group, what we're going through. Group right hallucination? Now. And there's 50 gallows and 50 people. All of these people wearing their kind of plain brown calamari robes. And the soldiers all stand and they stare at you intently. And he says, At your command, High Inquisitor. I wish to speak with them to see if they have any last words. And what have you done? What is your wrongdoing? We steward the dead. We protect against the undead. We are not Ilmatari. You are so blinded by your faith that you cannot see that there is more than one right way to think. Your living saint is a sham. Your religion is a mockery. And he kicks the stool out from underneath him and you hear a crack. On to the next one. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Just kill this guy. Get the fuck out of here. I can't watch 49 people drop to their deaths because we're scared to lose our our own lives. I'd rather die a martyr. They shall live in the nearest Ilmatari village and integrate with the people and we shall teach them our ways. Uh, my, my lord inquisitor, they are all Ilmatari villages. The whole of war is one. This was all a mistake. All of these should have died. Or in a dream, does it really matter? Like, Find your tent. Find your tent. You're a legion. We were just in a barn. You're, what makes you think we have a tent? You're a commander. We shall now retire to our tent. Escort us there. Yes, Lord Inquisitor. And he, again, does the salute. Uh, but he, like, Earl enough that previous insight check, he's just eyeing you up a bit like, that was out of character. Of the tent? <laughs> or the manor? Where's that pizza at? I don't know. It should be showing up soon, though. Good. We're almost out of cheese. Almost out of cheese? That's like an entire block of cheese right there. You've eaten at least a... Yeah, give me some of that cheese. (laughs) How much cheese we've eaten? Give me more. Well, yeah. Okay. He, uh, He leads you to the Legion camp where you see just a bunch of tents, like enough for 500 people kind of pitched out in very straight orderly lines and then he kind of leads you to the center where there's very clearly a, a, a tent that's denoted with different colors to like to mark command <coughs> and to the entrance way is five feet wide and ten feet tall and it shimmers faintly like a blue shimmer yeah what the entrance the entrance does and beyond the doorway is a magnificent foyer with numerous chambers beyond the atmosphere is clean fresh and warm. Oh, as you is enter this into freaking ah, Morton Common's magnificent mansion? I hate you. It was a mansion. I was right. It's Both. a spell. Oh, oh, what's the spell? You know what's the the dome one? Leaman's tiny hut. This is the fancy the, version. Well, no. Of so that. this isn't even Leaman. Like this is no. This is the, like a little step pocket up. dimension kind of thing. Yeah, it's the um. Yeah, there's some mansion spell that you can do that where it's got like servants and stuff like that. Yeah. Morton Kynan's magnificent mansion. That's one. Yeah. Yep. I've yeah, almost taken it before. It. And it's bar. got servants and rooms, and it's got food and feasts and stuff like that in it. Oh. And it's in, within its own pocket dimension. And is is Lotion there? <laughs> All of you are there. Oh, this magnificent wow. display of magical power and prowess is your tent. Lotion is trying to figure out why he was being spat at if he's allowed in here. You two, wait here. I wish to speak with 
Did we ever learn the name of that person that we've been talking to? You never asked. No. There's a couple different rooms, and you know, just like from walking in, you know how when you get at home at the end of a long day and your body just like goes towards your bed? Like, my you're body not, goes towards when my you're, wife. When you're not, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know, whoa! But you know when you're not like, you're not thinking and you're like, you're paying attention to something else and you like go to the bathroom and then you go to bed with, with a, there's no thought put into the direction that you go. You just kind of like go fully on autopilot. You walk into this tent, and as if on autopilot, you turn, and there's a room to the right, and it's your bedroom. And it's got a bunch of, like, tables set up with tinkering equipment and little gizmos and gadgets everywhere. And there's this tall silver mirror, like the old-style mirrors are made out of, like, polished gold and, like, um, what is it, pure metals. Behind, and silver. Behind glass, yeah. Pure silver. Which is why vampires would not have a reflection. Which is technically, I've heard, technically modern day vampires would have a reflection because yeah. they're not made with silver anymore. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's that true was like silver and nitrate or something though. Anyways, that was That's a good aluminum session. Something. <laughs> <Right>. Anyways. <laughs> and next to the mirror are a bunch of vials. Green vials with an unknown liquid in it. And without even thinking, you reach and you grab one of those green vials and you just <laughs> stick it into a slot on your arm that you didn't notice before. And it starts to bubble and enter your body. Bane! <laughs> <laughs> I never, ever thought about Bane. <laughs> so the but, moment you said that, I was like, <gasps> but not the Christopher Nolan Bane. I like was the, molded. I'm talking about, about the, was it Paul? It wasn't Paul Verhoeven. Who did the... Oh, it was Schumacher. Schumacher. The Schumacher Bane! And as you look at yourself in the mirror, you become less pale and acrid and the color starts to return to your flesh so shun confronts this person that we've been talking to and kind of corresponding with who seems to be upset with him at the moment yeah he he did seem a little peeved at you but it's hard to tell what's going on based on how hard your insight into his mindset is yes shun goes up and says wait did he follow us into our fancy mansion no no, no, Shun waits outside. He's out doing oh, clerical chat. He's got a clipboard, and he's shouting orders at people. He's clearly some sort of, maybe, second in command or ancillary legionary commander. Um, but Shun goes over and says, Now what seems to be the matter? You seem upset, almost annoyed. Uh, uh, no. your, your word is law, Lord Inquisitor. And he looks down, deferently. I asked you, what seems to be the matter? <laughs> Fuck. Give me an intimidation check. I love how Shun has slipped into this. S S S. What well. seems to be the problem? <laughs> so this is advantage on charisma checks is so nice because not twenty. No. Oh, he it looks sufficiently cowed, and he looks up at you and he says. I'm, I'm so sorry, Lord Inquisitor. I, I shouldn't have, have, have doubted your judgment or your 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 wisdom. I was momentarily surprised by the mercy that you have shown, given this campaign we have waged together, where you have not. And of course, the living saint will be not angry, but certainly displeased with your actions. He was. Explicit in his orders, but I know that you speak on his behalf when he's not present, and whatever judgment you have rendered, I'm sure there's a reason for it. And who are you? I'm your husband. <laughs> <laughs> he is so sufficiently intimidated that he's not even going to be phased by that. He says, I am, I am, I am, I'm no one. I'm lowly, sexist, abigrade. Your inferior, your second Sextus in command. Sextus Abergrade? Sextus Abergrade. He's a, a prefect and your second in command. Yes, my second in command. I defer to your wisdom, Lord Commander. And don't you forget it. He kneels and pees a little. <laughs> <laughs> now off with you. You have work to do. Uh, oh, of course, Lord Inquisitor. Um, I trust that... <laughs> You will tell the living saint the reason for our actions and that we were only following orders. Be the <laughs> we were only following orders. And he stands up and he salutes and he <laughs> squirts away his queasy cap. Shun's on where the a fuck fucking this... power trip. Yeah, where did the fuck did this come from? It's the boobs. 
Gosh. Sean, maybe it's a good thing if we just Lord and Quister maybe go inside and Alcordia points the door. Yeah, yeah, he like, goes inside after. I assumed you guys were already inside. He just stopped to chat with that person. Well, yeah, uh, Alcordia stopped and looked and watched you do this do this exchange, which is very out of out of character very for you, character. especially by seeing this different person speak with your voice still to our ears at least. This woman, yeah, yeah. Uh, give me perception checks, both of you. Thirteen, not twenty. Oh, that's what you needed. <laughs> As you're making your way back to the tent, you just happen to catch out of the corner of your eye just a little smithy area that they set up to kind of maintain and repair any armor that was damaged, any weapons that were damaged, or any new items that are required. And within that twenty, it just stands to you as a little bit odd. That it's like such a small, conf- like you can't just carry a smithy around with you. And then in turn you look and it looks like it's just like a small transportable kiln. And in fact, there's a man there just with his hands next to the kiln. And where he's holding his hands, fire is coming out. And he's heating the smithy with his hands, with magic. I only got a 13. No. He said you needed a net only 20. Only sees this. Get fu- We're still in a dreamscape. <laughs> Please. Uh, and you just see like just how do you think we walked into this mansion that's not yeah, really there? Just some blacksmith hammering it, like, but like just this blatant display of magical power. I think I need to get like a new battle axe or something. I gotta check this thing out. Hold on, I'll be right back. And she wanders over to the the smithy. He's got the classic like dirty, like he's brushing something off his forehead as every smith is in any media before he puts a <laughs> rag into his Human? Belt. Dwarven? Uh, dwarf. Dwarven. Hail and well met, smithy. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, this is why I hate dwarves. Uh, do you know who I am? He like tilts his head like a dog would. And the person heating the fire goes, oh, I wouldn't. No, he's um, a horse kicked him in the head six times. <laughs> but he, <laughs> makes, he makes a damned good axe, though. Hello, my name is Triven. I am a divination wizard. Can I assist you? Uh, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I, <laughs> I have just lost my my battle axe, and I, I require a new one. Quickly. Uh, certainly. Do you have any preference of materials? or um, Strong. Um, magical, oh, but like very <laughs> powerful. He takes a he takes out a, like a big, um, agate of metal. It's clearly steel, and he goes, um, should I change this to like silver, or do you want like platinum? Like, what kind of? It'll take me longer to cast to transmute it to different metals, but obviously we a cater. Gen- mm, gen- mm. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, uh s- s- silver. Silver sounds wonderful. I. <clears throat> I mean, I, I want silver. Silver. A silver axe, <clears throat> certainly. That'll take a couple days uh, time for him to craft after I transmute all the metal, but we will get you a silver axe right away. In the meantime, you can uh, take any great axe you need. Uh, the, and he's like a bunch of... Um, there's like five just sacks on a shelf. And he goes, I think uh, axes and swords are the fourth bag of holding. Oh, fourth bag of... Oh, yes. Well, of course. Of course. Uh, she grabs this bag and then sort of kind of opens it up and kind of looks inside. And it's like the shimmering portal to a void that you can't see. And she kind of turns her back to the blacksmith and kind of looks ar- looks around, reaches into the bag, and I guess pulls out a great axe? Yeah. So the way the bag of holding works is you just kind of picture the thing you want to pull out with your mind and all of a sudden your hand grasps around the hilt and this impossibly long, like, this bag's about the size of a standard coin sack. Uh, and so... And, like, impossibly, <laughs> this blade, this whole battle axe comes out of this... Like, there's no universe where it would fit, right? Yeah. Except a magic one. But, so she pulls this out, she's like... Kind of does the double take and, and kind of looks around and it's like... Just kind of casually drops it again. Or drops it. And then reaches into oh, here's your face, here's your face. <laughs> reaches into the bag again and, <laughs> and grabs another one and <laughs> pulls it out. <laughs> <laughs> again, an equally beautiful great axe comes out. Okay, this is kind of this this is kind of cool. She draws the other one, 
He's like, I'm just going to take the bag. The uh, wizard goes. See ya. Uh, <laughs> anything for the the party of actually? The what, what, what's what's in the other bags here? Wep all of them are weapons. Bows and air, bows, arrows, daggers, flails, mauls. This one has a bunch of spears in it. She grabs all <laughs> of them. Uh, the High Inquisitor needs these. We'll... You dare invoke my name. Uh, See ya. And she uh, just turns and uh, then walks towards... <laughs> and into persuasion check with advantage. Because while you have leniency, that's a lot. <laughs> Wouldn't it be deception then? Technically, you do have the I have two blessing. 18s right here, which makes it up to dirty 20. Yeah, uh, he goes, Ooh, oh, not bad, um, not bad. That's like an entire campaign's worth of... Huh? Um, <laughs> oh, all right, uh, well, um, <laughs> we'll just... Bye! OT oh, for the next three months. Oh, Finnegan, Seamus, Flannessy. I just have to pop by the store real quick and get more bags of holding. And he starts saying something in a weird language you don't understand, and a magic door appears. He steps through it and disappears, and the door flicks. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> runs off into the camp because now he's unsupervised. <laughs> <laughs> and one tent just bursts into flames. It's like, yeah. it's like you hear stabbing women. someone in the shin. <laughs> you hear women screaming, "Ah!" <laughs> it's like, "See ya." <laughs> yeah, Alicorn is like. All fire I, erupts in one of the tents. I have turns to. out his <laughs> ancestor to Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> Gibraltar's a half dwarf. But you know, but. So, yeah. The Isle of Man, come back. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she she heads towards the, the 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 magic castle or whatever it is, and then uh, yeah, walks in, gets in the door. It's like you guys have to see this. I've never seen anything like this in my life. And she does upends one magic. You know, bag of holding. And just like a bunch of weapons. And the pile keeps getting impossibly big until I think 500 pounds. What's the limit on a bag of holding? Yeah, 500 pounds of weapons fall out. She throws her hand into another bag and pulls out a great axe. Like, just on fire. <laughs> this. Well, okay, this is cool. I might keep this for later. Where does. Where the fuck are we? Lotion? Did you just stick some liquor into your arm? Is lotion, is lotion shooting up? Whatever substance this is doesn't feel like alcohol when okay. you drink it. It feels almost like, you know when that the coffee first hits you and you get that burst of energy? It feels like that. It feels like pure energy, sustenance. And you went from feeling cold to feeling warm all over, but not in like an alcohol way. And uh, because this is Morton Commons, I can just imagine there are servants kind of milling about. And you mention alcohol, and they kind of look at you. And they kind of keep going, but they're like, oh, what? Who? What? No. Sorry, just give me a minute here. <laughs> That's not the joke I was going for. <laughs> uh, Lo no, you found no alcohol so far in your time in the camp. No, I understand. And I don't think Lotion would be looking for it at this point. Did you just shoot up alcohol into your arm? Mm, I don't think so. I've never shot anything into my... I didn't know this was possible. This is quite fascinating. You said it was kind of like... Almost like a, a youth potion, right? You said it gave me warmth. Didn't you say it made me look younger too or something? It restored the Maybe look like of... less pale. Like, uh, the color to your skin. Okay, okay. It okay. removed the pallor. pallor. You almost looked a bit sickly before, but now you look hale and healthy and well met. <laughs> I honestly... I, I, don't, I, I feel so much better than I did before. Um, but I, I, I honestly don't know what this is. Uh, can I do some sort of check maybe to figure out what this is? Absolutely. What kind of check would that be? It'd be knowledge arcana. 21 on that arcana check. This is very obviously some sort of magical liquid that infuses life energy itself into you. The 21, you feel like this made you feel more alive than you did were previously like even real life like like you have back on emerged from the podcast no no like you were feeling like bad and sickly and now okay. you feel as though you've like come back from the brink as though rejuvenated sorry i said real life i didn't mean like <laughs> humans on earth i meant lotions real life okay 
Made me feel better than when I first spawned here. Okay. Okay, but I don't know if this is magic or is this chemical or... Like, before you felt like death warmed over. And now you feel like a warm, happy fella. I don't know what to make of this. I'm sorry. I'm failing this puzzle. I, I got you. Don't you worry. Are you in the room with me? I'll ask someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, the kitchen just has... <laughs> Servant. Shun, you just literally saw me dump out an entire... Like... Like, a huge pile... Yeah, man, it's almost daggers. like anything can happen in a hallucination. I, it's I like a dream. I don't think this... You ever have <sighs> dreams before Alicordia? So, what happens when you, you know, how do you wake up from a dream, Sean? Like, when you wake up. Yeah, wake but, up. but what happens? Like, does somebody hit you? Does somebody pinch you? Pinch you when you wake up from a dream sort of thing? I don't know, like, you just wake up when you wake up. So, like, if you had a dream about falling and then you wake up just before you hit the ground... I mean, sometimes, but so like not always. So grabs him. <laughs> is there a cliff anywhere nearby? No, no, no. It's not a cliff. No, no but it's there's, not a, a cliff. there's a ceiling Good. above you. There's a ceiling above you. <laughs> and she's going to throw you up to the ceiling <laughs> up, and then <laughs> drop you down to the ground again. Do you allow this? <laughs> I mean, if I can not allow it, then that sure. Is, but that's how D&D &D works, baby. For posed rolls. Strength decks? Uh, I think it would be strength and decks, yeah. That's a 16 on my end. That's less. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No math required. <laughs> to the roof. Roll, uh, I don't know, 2d6 damage. <laughs> That's 11. Fuck. Slams you against the ceiling and then slams you against the ground. Domestic d abuse, everyone. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> We're not what married. What's that for? Oh, yeah. Fair enough. Male on female violence. Did you wake up, Shun? Are you awake now? Do you feel like you're awake? Well, no, I clearly wasn't falling from a high height either. That was kind of a dick move. I don't think we're sleeping, Shun. This well, isn't sleep. It's a hallucination. It's a little different than natural sleep. God. There's clearly some kind of like vapors or gases in the cave. <laughs> so it's not a natural sleep. No, Alicordia. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> so how are we having a sh how are we having a shared goddamn dream? Yes, because we're all there together. So duh. Doesn't, so doesn't we're, make sense. So we're sharing our thoughts magically. No. <laughs> <sighs> I'm still trying to piece together what I just injected it into myself. I just watch an insane dwarf forge a sword with his hands. A sword? Well, I saw none Did of it resemble. That. Did it resemble the sword that Backbucket had? I wasn't looking. I, I have no idea. Maybe there's one. In, maybe there's one in one of these stupid bags, and she upends another bag. As if you remember the name of the New England backwards. <laughs> <laughs> New Havenite backwards. The New Havenite. <laughs> and she empties, starts emptying out another bag. She's like, Sean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of all these swords. <laughs> Like, like, because it's the dagger bag, there's probably about 200 of them. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to drown in the, We're not going to drown. We're going to be crushed in this room. Um, the serpents mm -hmm. keep coming by and, like, sweeping. <laughs> <by> the <weapon. laughs> Beg your pardon, my lord. <clears throat> well, we, we all examine the sword from Backpacken. Is it, or the, which is the sword from the, it's the last relic from the dig site. Do, do these swords... Scott, do these swords resemble the backbooking sword? Uh, these are just mundane, oh. ordinary swords. <clears throat> Servants. People. Hey, my lid. Uh, tell us. What year is it? This is a test. Because. And moon we're, phase. We're telling you. And, yeah, and, and day of the week. And mo day of the week and moon phase. <laughs> Scott's giving us fucking daggers <laughs> now. Like, Why? <laughs> <laughs> It's the fourth day of the five-day week cycle. <laughs> in the, oh, no. Uh, they must have been on a different system before the turnover. In the year 687, after the fall of Tiamat, the two moons are currently waxing. Two? Two moons. Yeah. Is there normally two moons? 
No, Hell this is Clark asking Scott, is there normally two moons on Telbos? I don't know. There are eight, and they are <laughs> some of them are deserts <laughs> and some of them are <laughs> some of them are spheres. Okay, this actually rings true. So there's six more moons in our Telbos than this Telbos. You say that out loud? No, this is me okay. Clark talking. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, uh, both moons are waxing currently, I believe. Both moons? As in two? two? That's no moon. It's your mom. <laughs> 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 Set yourself up again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if we're actually in the past now. Perhaps we're in an alternate Telbos. What? Excuse Heart, me, sir. Did you say Hallucination, that? don't yeah, you Yes, get? yes. They kind of go... What? Hell What's the name of this land? Redelbos. Well, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Na- rename it right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, blood. <laughs> and the four of them are like huddle. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, like Redelbos uh, with like, a with a D or a T. My, my name is Scott, so we could call it Scotland, perhaps. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> My name's Ire. How about we just call it Ireland? My name's Cunt. How about Cuntland? Oh, oh it's called country. They turn around like, yeah, it's country. <laughs> Named wow. after the great tree. <laughs> wow, that's that's way better than I came up with. Red, red bus. Are we on the other side of Telbos? This no, is meta. This there is, is Clark talking. there is no other side of Telbos. Well, it well it's a disc. <laughs> <laughs> there's top side and there's bottom side. No, no one goes to bottom side. You'd fall off. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fairy tale. Um, I, we've got to get. Is there a library in this place? I mean, there's the the great library at the Tower of the Willful Sufferer, my lord. But um, and they kind of look at shit and they go, uh, se- several others. Mysteriously burned. Burn. And, and they look at Shen like, it's not mysterious. <laughs> oh no, did you just burn the Library of Alexandria but in Telbos? No, no, Relibos. say what you mean. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, d- d- uh, Telbos. My, my lord cleansed the world <laughs> of heretical knowledge. And? <laughs> and uh, it is it's good, yes. Uh, under... Un- on the rack <laughs> 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 and they scurry off they <laughs> what a fucking power trip <laughs> yeah 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 now you just need to be like is there someone here named kuso <laughs> you hear <gasps> kuso <laughs> the hero of legend Turns out he outranks them by just one rank. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, did we get what year it was? Supreme High Inquisitor. <laughs> we need we need a map. Yes, can we please see the map of Redelbos, please? My lord, you burned all the maps. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> and I do it again. Scott is showing us the map. And it... Why? Is that this the mirror like image of Telbos? Oh, it's, he flipped Telbos. Did you flip it? Uh huh. No. No? Was it the exact same? It's um, the exact same continent. Shun asks one of the nearby servants as well. Now, do you know what we have done with those who follow, say, the god of luck? Oh, we banned him good, we did. <laughs> yes. We called yeah. him unlucky. And how does that make you feel? Good. <laughs> what a- On with your day. <laughs> Thank you, my lord. Good. I live to serve. On pon- pon- <laughs> Lotion is watching these phrases that he's used his entire life get thrown around so nonchalantly about burning people to death, and it's it's hitting him hard in the heart every time he hears it. Where? Oh wait, before you go, where where on the map? Are we just testing? Just a just a test of. Do you know what you're doing? Where actually we are here? Are we anywhere by say the Frisky Peaks? He points to a mountain range that is like that's where the Frisky Peaks would be, a little bit northeast of the Frisky Peaks. 
And the Tower of the Willful Sufferer is clearly denoted on the map, but it doesn't say where Kyrados would say Quernos. It doesn't say that. It just says Tower of the Willful Sufferer. Do any of the other map names look familiar? Are there any other map names on there, like city names and stuff like that? Uh, there, it's, it's Kevin Vonger. It's one of those war maps. Oh, so mm. it's kind of got like map. the little Kevin Vonger is a main port city. No, no, no. So if it's a campaign map. Th there's no like oh. those don't have uh, geographical land points. It's just got like a little fake tower where the Tower of the Wolf Sufferer would be, and then just like a bunch of troop movement. And you can see there are Amatari troops mm, gotcha. across the continent. Yeah, so that's given us a puzzle that I can't really. I mean. Well, perhaps we should just turn it in tonight and hopefully we wake up in the morning for real. Hopefully. The gases have What is my name? Diffused themselves. Do I know my name? My lord. Your, your names are... And then you can see his lips like saying a word. And he clearly like says a different word than Lotion. But you hear Lotion. And you hear Alicordia and you hear Shun. Huh. Lotion's like squinting at his lips, like, uh huh. Say, 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 say that again. Say that again. He does, and the same thing happens. You guys, servants, fuck off. <laughs> By his hands. By his hands. Oh, what? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, that was. Okay, let's think about this. <laughs> let's think about this logically. Let's think about this logically. Uh, Lotion, you're some type of weird thing that. Artificer Sticks. of some sort. A what? An artificer of some sort. What the fuck is an artificer? They're a class of 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> uh, they're, um, well, tinkerers. They experiment in combination of magic. Like a gnome? No, homunculi. Th that, um, that's all that the gnomes do what's, back. Fuck, what's it called? The... the the, the when you try to turn lead to gold, uh, alchemist. transmutation, oh, alchemy, alchemy. Alchemy. Yeah. alchemy, alchemy. I mean both technically. <laughs> and this newfangled thing called chemistry, but it's pronounced chemistry. Yes, yeah, sorry, my bad. Chemistry. Yeah, chemistry has something to do with chimera. That is correct. I do not <laughs> know very much about this. Being a man of the book and the cloth and the Lord, and the bottle oh, and what. Well, well, you, power, you say that, that, but he hasn't had a drink all day, and he's not showing any... It's been like two or three days that since yeah. I've had a drink. We're hallucinating. Oh, yeah. Continue. I know I'm not hallucinating. You can keep saying that to make yourself feel better, Shun, but we might be on one of the most important vision quests that, we, that we'll ever go on in our entire lives. You say that like we're going to hallucinate a lot. Oh, for fuck's sakes. We're not fucking hallucinating. You keep talking the way you are. I'm going to hallucinate you all the way to the moon. Pow. <laughs> Which one? Fuck. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't be asking the question, where are we? But why are we here? I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? Shun, <laughs> Shun, do you still have your coin on you? I don't know. It is in fact tucked between your breasts as Stephen pantomimed doing the same thing before <laughs> saying the words ample on a bosom on a on a cord what uh what's on the coin now a tower just a tower both sides well there's a tower and there's a skull yeah it changed again I don't know what's with that but you you see a tower on the coin and then you hear a a knock at the front door. And as... Who the fuck is it? <laughs> you gotta chill. Uh, uh, Alicordia, jeez. Se Sextus, my lord. Uh, just wanting to know when the troops should... You know, the ones who aren't gonna stay in guard, when should we return to the tower? You're not there already? As... Lotion, you hear... Coming from a room off to the side. I follow the sound of the clink clink. So as you, you walk away, as the two of them are talking to Sextus, and he says, uh, we, we, can, we can move at any time you, you want, my lord inquisitor. Um, return to the, the living saint. Uh, report our progress. Yes. Take the other troops back, and I shall join you. 
Uh, you'll come with us, or you'll join us shortly after. You were in big shortly after. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Oh. Uh, and he starts rallying the legion, and they start to head out. You can see they're packing up tents and stuff. Several of them are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> a dwarf. Illusion, <laughs> you make your way into a room off to the side. There's a man wearing a a, a nice looking. One of your servants is wearing a red vest, and he's standing behind a bar top. What'll it be? He takes out a bottle of bourbon. What is Lloyd? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir, I just finished reading the shine. <laughs> it's all here, Mr. Torrance. Uh, uh, bourbon on the rocks, Mr. Lurgeon. Make it a double. I just had a little argument with the old sperm bank upstairs, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Ah, it's in I just happen to have two gold coins and two silver coins right here in my pocket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was worried this bottle was going to be here till next month. <laughs> <laughs> next Tuesday. Sorry, back me up. Where was I? <laughs> you popped up into another room where yep. someone's serving alcohol. Okay. And he pours you a drink. Mm. He says, Ooh. now, of course, uh, Mr. Lotion, you must be careful. This is a... A dry camp and alcohol's not thought of well by the Amatari. So. How, how'd you get it in here? My hand is reaching out and trembling as I I'm so close to why is it why is it frowned upon? Actually Lotion would know that wouldn't he? The Amatari uh, uh, refuse a lot of luxuries. So, then why is it here? Why is it even allowed on the camp, Lloyd? Little secrets, Mr. Lotion. Little secrets. Report him. <laughs> Fuck. That is Jesus. And he like starts corking the bottle. There's still a fully poured glass, and he like starts putting stuff away. So I'm afraid I must run, Mr. Lotion. But of course, no charge for you for that drink. I know this is this is this is sad, but Lotion has seen a lot of things that really challenged him, and have really frightened him, and saddened him, and shook him to the core. And uh, even though his f faith has already been faltered, uh, there's always questions as to whether uh, what he's been experiencing is a good thing or a bad thing. But regardless, seeing the Ilmatari cr committing all these, not necessarily war crimes, but things that they clearly covered up, he's at a very low point. And he snatches up that bottle, sorry, that, that glass of wheat bourbon. And he downs it. In one go. He just stares off into the... into the. Is there a mirror? There is a mirror. There's a mirror behind the bar. And as He's, you take the, the alcohol back, the color kind of drains a bit from the your jaw and your face, and you see stitches along your jawline. And you turn back, and whoever it was is gone, and you're in an empty room. Lloyd? Just a piece of paper on the table. Intrigue. Says, Drinks on the house. What does it say? Uh, your money's no good here. Orders from the house. Lotion goes. That was weird. But that was really good alcohol. We say I'm a little buzzed now? You are. And oh, it was good. like sickly and sweeter than any alcohol you're used to. It hit you real good. I <clears throat> meander back to the party. Maybe looking a little, with a little curly smile on my face. And of note, stitch marks where your and jaw has been sewn back together. Right. The heck happened to you? Huh? What? L Lotion, why do you have stitches on your jaw? Uh, what? Sext Sextus is still there and he sees Lotion and he, again, spits. It's disgusting artifice. Hey, what's your problem with him? I'm sorry, my lord. I was uncalled for, and I apologize. I asked you a question. Out with it. My lord, may, may I speak freely? I have quite clearly asked you to do so. Oh, no. May I speak in confidence? And he keeps making eyes at Lotion. Who's swaying just a little bit now? Lotion, please leave us for a moment. Aye, aye, Captain. Alcordia, you as well. During this time, Alicordia has been like, 
dump grabbing, her gra- no, <laughs> <laughs> grabbing daggers and throwing them back into the pouch. And she's like, I'm going to need these later. <laughs> Fine. Lotion, maybe let's, I don't know, find you another drink or something? Okay. It, it, it's a sex kind of, I, I, ex- drinks, uh, Like what? a drink of water, you idiot. Mm-hmm. Milk! <laughs> oh, he needs some milk. The two of um, you wander off. He says, "What the fuck?" If that's a meme. Yeah, oh, that's okay. a that's like an old vine, I think. Okay, I thought you were getting at like your breasts or something, and I was like, "Okay, <laughs> let's leave." Oh, the lactation oh. <laughs> My lord, I, you know, I do not wish to speak ill of the company that you keep, but the fact that you have chosen one of the reborn as one of your companions sickens me and many of the, the troops. Tell me what you know of the Reborn. Uh, the, the Reborn are so-called as they were once alive and then ceased to be due to any circumstances and then through arcane dark technologies have been brought back. He uses whatever that vial is to keep himself fresh but when he forgets it long enough his ashen flesh and bloodless veins make it more than clear, he's a disgusting monster touched by death. And your issue with this, if you will. He's an abomination and disgusting. Does he not suffer? He is. As we all suffer? He is blasphemy. And does he not suffer? I mean, the Kelimvarites suffered and we killed most of them. Yes, yes. Heretics and heathens. They do not suffer righteously. Very well, and what would you have me do? I would have you speak to your father and tell him of the decisions you made today. And it would be his judgment that would be righteous and true. You would have me speak to my father? Yes, my lord. Utter his name. Gaius Erastus, the mm. living saint of Imad. You're fucking kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. <laughs> <laughs> to the listeners at home, this is my most hated character from another campaign. Or at least as a, uh, uh, ancestor of him. <laughs> Park is crushing every can of rage. And he's it's got stuck his to his thumb. This is, so, <laughs> this is amazing. We'll sit here like this all night. <laughs> the pain makes me feel good. Are he's, that's not a joke. That's, <laughs> are you giving me more cans to crush? What's going on here? Yes, that is right. And I am the High Inquisitor. And you think I don't know best? You'd think I don't know my own father's wishes? He starts, like, backing away. Thank you for speaking freely. Now go. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> la, 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 la. As he goes out, someone starts stabbing him. Shit. <laughs> 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 hey, yo, Lotion, Alicordia. Get back here. Yeah, we heard everything. We were staying at the door. <laughs> Lotion's looking at his hand. Okay, Puck. cool. I was going to tell you Puck. anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I just that picked saves like, me telling you. The big head pops out and then Lotion pops out <laughs> underneath Scooby-Doo still. <laughs> 100%. I'm undead? I don't think you're on. Un- Are you undead? Like you died and now you're not dead again. Well, don't you do that when people die, Lotion? Haven't well, you done that before? The undead are reanimated. There's no soul. How do you feel you have a soul? I don't know if it really matters, but it's like... <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was like, you shouldn't <laughs> wouldn't ask that. <laughs> Resurrection is you're returning a person's soul, their being, <clears throat> to their to their body. Reanimating is there's no soul. It's a, it's a curse. It's an abomination. So do you Am think I you're now an, an abomination? abomination? Jinx. As a pinky, like, falls off. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are these... What are these green things? I don't know. 
I tried to do an arcana check and it didn't tell me much. Um, but it definitely... Well, hang on. I grab one of these... Can I grab or one of those green things around? Five left. Glug? No, I... I shoot up. Where does it go? Into a slot on your arm. Okay. Burn! <laughs> do I get jazzed up like that? Or do I... Do the scars on my face recede? Scars on your face recede. Your pinky pops back on. <laughs> does it lift up from the ground? Or does it just... Another one sprout out? Mm, uh, like one of the servants came by and held it. And then like... <laughs> <laughs> if we're going... Well... We're leaving for the suffer, the tower of the willful suffer. No, we don't have to. I told them that. I told them to go, and we <laughs> follow after. This seems to be a little bit big. Maybe there's a Denny Sabur in there. Yeah. Any connections? Well, anything that helpful. we can. Anything that we can find. What if we try going back to like that cave here? We don't even know where we are here. Here. He's right. Let's go look at the map again. Maybe there's like a big you are here that we missed. <laughs> I mean, you have an idea of where you are. Okay. That's where your little legion guy was pointing. The little exactly. Ha ha. Is it, is it near ride, where? A few days ride north of the Tower of the Wolf Suffer. So we're not near the dig site we were at. Like, uh, you're looking at the... Between-ish. I mean, you're looking at this combat map. Um... There's no valley in this mountain range. Interesting. All right, so what, you guys want to go back to Quernos, but not Quernos? Yes, but no. Well, which want... is it? I don't want to be falling apart. I don't know, Shun. This is fucking weird as far as I'm concerned. Well, yeah. We need to find some date. fucking answers. Maybe. This Erasmin. Jasmine? It was Erasmus. Erasmus. Gaius. Gaius Erasmus. It's weird. Gaius is the name of my dad. His name is Gaius? Yeah. Gaius and Lily. Well, Lily is my mom's name. My dad's yeah, name is yeah, Gaius yeah, and Lily. Yeah, semantics. Whatever. Fuck. But there was both names? Well, no. Just Gaius Erasmus. I've never heard the last name Erasmus. That's a weird one, but... <laughs> As a little <laughs> vein twitches in Lotion's forehead, and he goes, Neither have I, but for some reason, it irks me. <laughs> <laughs> it angers me so. <clears throat> um, I think we can probably get more answers at this tower. Yes, I agree. We should go to the tower. Well, why don't we leave like a day after the rest of the army and we see how all those uh, people are doing in the town before we take off? Are you kidding? You're no. supposed to be the person that like has sent them to be executed. From what I'm gathering, you're you're the reason behind all of this. And then you're going to stick around you're and You're going to blame me for this? Hey, We've yeah. known each other for like a week. Fuck sakes, Sean. You're really going to blame me for this? Like mm -hmm. in a hallucination of all things? Like none of this is real. I'm tired of you, Sean. This is dumb. Lotion, can you agree with me on this? Lotion, Lotion, see the masses right now. But having read the masses, Lotion looks at you and he goes, I don't know if we did them a favor. Now that I've seen how they reacted to surviving, I think maybe they don't want to talk to us. Well, only one way to find out, right? <laughs> John, have you ever been in a conquered city? Have you ever been somewhere? Have you? No, probably not, hey? Do you remember around the fire when I was telling you about my family? Yeah. Do you know how many people have died in the Sabur? Nope. More than you know. I mean, like I just said, I don't know the number. I might have helped with some of those. So Might why don't we... Did. Are you threatening him? Insight check? Empath insight check? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Or 15? <clears throat> oh yeah. 
She's telling the truth. She's been involved with some nasty stuff. You can tell it. Are you threatening him? <laughs> I'm threatening her. Well, like, I'm not her. Like, it, you're really confusing people here. I didn't do anything. I let people live. But then they... maybe, maybe Alicordia. I suggest you try something different. And stop threatening. I like that. Because <laughs> if you don't like death, and you don't like it following you, maybe try not death. <laughs> Have you tried not killing people? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think someone who has conquered a people and killed them would be welcomed to be like, hi, how are you? You ever think of that? Yeah, but like at the same time, obviously I'm going to stay to keep an eye on them. Like, I'm not just going to be like, yeah, I'm going to let everyone live. And do you know how a hierarchy out. works? I was just I'm 15. What do you think? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. And you well, don't. Well, if I may, I think what your second in command was saying that it's not normal for you to show mercy and then to suddenly show, uh, stick around and be like, hey, you're my buddy. Tell That's me about exactly your day. What I'm getting at. They might. Look, Lotion, I did this for you. And Lotion, Lotion stares off into space again. He goes, I don't. Yes, and now I think I may be. Panic. Okay, fine. Then we'll kill them all tomorrow. <laughs> Fuck. Or we just, can we just not go to the tower? Like, you, you gave the order. They're going to follow out the order, correct? Yeah. Then why don't we just go to the tower? Well, I mean, do you want to kill them now? Like, we can kill them now. That's no, I fine. I don't want to kill anyone. Look, like, we can kill them tomorrow. It doesn't matter. Why do you want to kill them all of a sudden? Because you're upset that we let them live now. You think that it was a mistake, so we can still kill them. That's cool. I'm thinking maybe we shouldn't have intervened. Doesn't mean I want them dead. There's a difference. Okay, fine. I'll tell them they can kill themselves if they want. Leave them here. If they're going to kill themselves, I'll do it. If somebody else is going to kill them, order them to do it. Don't stick around. Well, all right. So do I order them to die or not? Why do you have to leave orders? I don't know. That's you know, what she said. Yeah, she's not in charge. I am, I know. <laughs> but you guys seem to have a big problem with what I did all of a sudden, even though I did it for you. Yeah, and I maybe made a mistake. You don't have to kill anyone, and you don't have to save anyone. Maybe that's what I need to learn. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like a period to the heart. You're waiting for it. Let's be fair. Well, fine. Let's just go to bed and like we'll go to the tower tomorrow then. And it, I mean, if imaginary people kill themselves, then imaginary people kill themselves. You it's are, still kind of depressing, but like you are so blinded. And Alcorty just turns around and walks out of the door. Out of the tent. Yes. You see that uh, the legions have kind of packed up and they are marching away. And all that's left is kind of Sextus on his horse. And he looks at you and he goes, Ah, yes, the uh, the Goliath. Um, we are... And he does an awkward salute to you like he's not sure what to do. She mimics it and it's like, Yeah, whatever, I guess. Uh, the Legion heads due south. We're seven days ride out. We will march in earnest from dawn till dusk until we arrive back. We eagerly await your arrival. Uh, one quick thing, though. Yeah. There have been reports of strange happenings in a nearby village. Like, you're going to have to elaborate strange things. I, I think I've seen a lot of strange things today. There's a nearby village that reports perhaps, um, I wouldn't call it criminal extortion, but there's apparently some local gang who's been stealing all of their cows. Now, obviously, this is too small a task for the legions. However, I do know you um, seem to have taken a recent penchant for social justice, so perhaps it seems like a thing you'd want to check out. And he spurs the horse and he rides off like the dick that he is. Uh, I guess we've got a fucking cow problem now. Add that to my list. Why don't you tell me what your plan is? Are you going to go check out the cows? Or are you going to go check out the tower? Well, 
How far this this is this is this is kind of an angsty situation because Alicordia has obviously been through a lot of the gang stuff, and her son's reluctance to kind of see what's actually happening is frustrating her to completely no end. She's not really interested in chatting with him right now. Uh, you make it seem like she's not problematic herself. Oh no, I, I'm completely aware of that, but. <clears throat> Just the whole situation is completely flabbergasting. It's quite overwhelming. Because she sees the realize Alicordia like, is whelmed. Overwhelmed. So it's you seen Lotion being talked to as a uh, an abomination. Some of that shoots up some weird shit in her whatever. shun has got rock and tits. And uh, is Real apparently the commander of a legion, a high inquisitor, and her father runs the Tower of the Willful, Willful Sufferer. We're in a different location. We've just been told there's a bunch of cows that are getting stolen. So maybe that's something that the high inquisitor and two of her potential lieutenants can go check out. But it's just kind of a frustrating kind of thing. Could we argue that we can go check out the cows on the way? I know it's not on the way, but to take it. Uh, like, is it you can take whatever time you need? You're in charge. Okay. Away from or tangential towards? Tangential towards. Oh, then that's fine. We just take a bit extra bit loop around. Yeah. yeah, detour. Sure, we can go check out the cows or the town. Yeah. So I guess Alicordia will walk back into the tent. It's like, ah, uh, Sextus, Sext the sheep, Sextus. Apparently there's some people stealing cows, and I guess we can go check it out in the next town But while we're on the way to the tower. You ride about half day south on your luxurious ponies that were left behind with a note that just said, here's some horses, love, and the name is scratched out, and you can read what it was. And as you make your way into the town, you can see that, like, these people have lost everything. They're destitute, they're poor, they're hungry. And one of them comes up to you, and he's got a glass of milk in his hand. Or a glass that would hold milk, but it's empty. And he says, "Want a cold water too?" Please, sir. My bones. <laughs> 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 My bones are so weak; they keep coming and taking the cows. Wait, wait, so you had cows? We did, but they came and they took them. And your bones got this weak, this weak, this fast? I'm so growing and young. <laughs> 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 Who took the cows? Comes real quiet, and he looks off to a nearby hill where you hear. That really uh, didn't answer the question. I bet it's a goddamn dwarf that I saw earlier that ran around. He says it's nearly nightfall. You should, you should get inside. Or what? Find milk if you can. <laughs> Have you got milk? And he goes inside, and you see a bunch of like doors in the town are closing and like locking fast. So like, are I'd, we gonna go inside or stay outside because like after I got thrown to a roof it's like I only have 2 HP left or something <laughs> like that yeah. yeah after I got blasted by some sort of magical fucking bolt that came out of thing, it, it's like I only have 6 HP left so she just walks up to a door and be like let me in and pushes it open um, yeah I don't think these doors are really something you burst your way and I'm like ah no what have you done Oh uh, God, they'll find us. We, they'll find our reserves no, of milk we, under the floorboards. Okay, wait. Why? I don't know why you're hiding milk under the floorboards, but because that's the only place it's safe. I from from what? From what? And then, in, as the sun sets, you hear in the background. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> <And> this <laughs> carriage crests over the ridge, and it's made entirely of bones. And four skeletons are riding on top of it, and one's driving. <laughs> 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 